Hey everyone, it's Zueb Khan and I'm a front-end engineer. The other day I was looking at this YouTube sidebar which is available in the YouTube studio and I thought it looked really nice. And when you click on this Hamburg icon, it neatly goes away into the collapse state with a nice animation. And when you click on it again, it comes back again. And when you navigate from, for example, if you navigate to the content, you can see that there's a nice animation and there's a nice horizontal bar here. You go into comments, you come back to content. So this is really nice. So I wanted to replicate this in Angular and Voila. This is my version of it. So you can see uh, the icons and everything is pretty similar. This is the main content. This is the sidebar. And when you click on this, you can see very similar animations here from going to the icons to the sidebar here and you can see the routes are also changed and when you click on the hamburger you can go to the collapse state if you want more room here in your main content and you can then click on this and it basically does the same thing click on it again it expands so let's see how i managed to create this okay so let's get started so the first thing we need to do is to create the new project the angular project itself now i have angular version 16 because i want to use signals for this project so make sure that you have the angular 16 cli available with you or installed then you need to use ng new and you need to use the standalone option because I will be creating a standalone app and also I'm also going to be using the inline templates and the inline styles because I like that way of working. If you like separate styles and separate um, templates, you're most welcome to do so. This is going to create your new project and then after you have created that new project, you can go into that project and you can do ng add angular material which is going to add the angular material components. These material components we are going to use for our side navigation and for icons and all of the different elements on the UI. Great. So now your project is all set up and I have already set up this project here. So I'm going to start it from here. Great. So let's first go to your app.component.ts, which is the main root component of your project. And we can see we already have the routing set up by adding the router outlet here. This router outlet basically represents the content which we have dashboard here. So let's just leave that here and let's just add the UI that we need on top of it. So let's start adding the UI here. So first of all, what we're going to do is we are going to add the toolbar at the top here. So let's add this toolbar here. We're going to do mat toolbar module and we need to add an import here. The easy way to do it or the easiest way in VS code is to actually just do angular material toolbar here and leave it this empty then when you write this module here you can use the quick fix to add this import here great so let's add the match toolbar here okay let's do ng serve open so we can see how this looks great so we just have a toolbar here okay let's open this up now as you can see here there is a bit of shadow here so let's add this shadow here as well so let's add this there is some built-in shadows that we have available with angular material and we can use those so you can see this nice shadow that we get here great now while we are at this let's also add our hamburger button although we don't need it right now but we're going to need this later so we are going to import the angular material buttons and also the angular material icon we're going to do matte button module use the quick fix and then the matte icon module use the quick fix and we're done now in the matte toolbar we are going to add a button element here now this will be a mat icon button and then inside we're going to give the mat icon now this icon will menu let's test this out and we can see we have this nice menu button here right now it will do nothing but we're going to add it in due course great so now the next thing we need to do is to add the side navigation now to add the side navigation we have the mat side nav module in angular so let's import that here now angular material side nav and here we are going to do mat side nav module okay now so the mat side nav module basically has a few parts Parts to it. So the first part that it has is sort of the container and that is called the mat side nav container element. This basically represents the whole page below the toolbar and within this we will have a mat side nav which contains the sidebar and then we'll have the mat side nav content which basically contains our content. Now for the content we know that it will be the router outlet because this is going to contain our roots or pages you could say so we put this in the content itself now we can also give it a class here because the content usually has some form of a margin here so let's give a margin here to the content padding this is a padding of 24 pixels here great now when we add this what we see is that the side nav or the side nav container is only of this width here and also we have sort of removed the drop shadow here now why is that now that is because the matte toolbar needs to be above the matte side nav container the matte side nav container seems to be covering up the matte toolbar shadow here so let's add some styles to the matte toolbar and let's see matte toolbar 
we're going to target it using the components name itself. We're going to make this position as relative so that Z, in Z index applies to it. And then we're going to add a Z index of five. And now we can see that the toolbar appears on top. But what do we do with the side nav container here? So the side nav container needs to be exactly this height. And what is this height? So this height is, let me add it here. Let us target the mat side nav container here. And this height we are going to call as a calculated function. This would be 100 VH, which is the viewport height. And let's take the height of this toolbar, which is about 64 pixels. Great. And now you can see the grayish thing. It expands to the whole remaining viewport here, which means that the side nav container has expanded here. Okay. Let's try and add something in the mad side nav and see whether it shows up. So if I write hello here, oh, it does not show anything. And why is that? Now that is because the mad side nav has a couple of states that we need to be mindful of. So mad side nav appears in different states. Uh, it can be opened or it can be closed. Now in our case, we want it to always remain open. We're not going to hide it, but we are going to collapse it to a lesser width. So for that, we have a property for the mad side nav called opened. Great. Now, as soon as we add that property, we can see that the side nav is really small, but it does show hello here. Don't worry about the width. We are going to set the width in due course. Okay, so this is open, but we can see that there's a backdrop here and then it disappears. So this is the mode of the mad side nav. Now, there are three modes of the mad side nav. One is, I think, over one is push and one is side. So we are interested in the side mode because we want it to be alongside our content. So we're going to do this side and let's see how this great. So yes, you can see, I can see the hello. And now when I click on it, the side nav does not go inside. Great. Now let's give some initial width to the side nav itself. And we are doing it in this way because we want to actually make this dynamic later on because we're going to change it according to the collapse and the expanded state. So let's just give it static width for now. And we're going to give this 250 pixels. Great. And you can see that it is expanded to its height that it should be. And you can compare it with your YouTube studio here. And it's just almost the same. You can make it less or more if you want. Great. So the sidebar here is looking nice, but it doesn't have anything inside of it. So to fill up this side nav, let's create a new component, which is going to contain our side nav content. So let's create a new component here. We're going to create a new terminal window here. We're going to do ng g c, which means the component. And we're going to add this to the components folder. We're going to call this custom side nav as opposed to the side nav of the material components. So let's just create this and you can see now that you have created the custom side nav component here. Now we are just going to write the custom side nav component here app custom side nav and it gives the error here. But when you click on this, it's going to give you an option of importing it automatically. And when you click on this, you can see that it imports it automatically and also adds it to your imports here. Great. So convenient. So now we are going to create the custom side nav content. So let's go into your custom side nav. Let's go into this component and see what we have here. Okay. So the first thing we need to do here is to create the header of the side nav, just like we have here, the header like this. So let's create that. Let's remove this default template here. Let's add a div and call this side nav header. Now the first thing it will have will be the image element. Now the image I have added to my assets folder. And this is basically my own image, the same image that is here in YouTube studio. So if I go into assets, you can see this profile pic here. So you can add any pic to your assets folder. Now in the source, I'm going to write assets profile pic dot jpg. And let's see how this looks. Whoa, that's huge. And that is because we don't have any width or height set to it. So let's set a width and height. Let's set the width and height to be 100 at this point. Okay, next, let's also add another div, which will be a part of the side nav header. This div will is going to contain the text, the header text that we have. So let's give it a class of header text. And inside here, we are just going to add some hard coded values for now. The first is your channel and the second is your name. So let's see how this looks. Of course, it needs a lot of styling. So let's then go to the styles and add the styles that we need. So first of all, we're going to do side nav header. Now in the side nav header, we are going to add some padding at the top and we're going to do text align center. Great. And then what do we do of the image? So we're going to target the image within the side nav header and we're going to first of all, make the border radius as 100%. This is going to make it in the circular shape that we want. And we're also going to do object fit cover because the image can obviously be in any aspect ratio and we want to show it in fit in this uh, container and then let's also give the margin bottom of 10 pixels great now what do we do of the header text so for the header text we are going to target the heading element 
which is we're going to remove the margins because it's interfering with our styling here and we're going to give it a font size of 1 rem and also a line height of 1.5 rem great and then there will be the p inside of it which will have the same thing we're going to give a margin of 0 to clear this and then the font size will be a bit less than that which would be 0.8 rem great so this looks pretty similar to how we have here okay now let's add the next element below the side nav header and that is our main menu bar now the main menu bar is going to be added using the material list and we are going to iterate over our menu items but first we need to create the structure of our menu items so let's create a type at the top of the file here let's say export type menu item this type is going to have the icon which will be the string this will be the material icon then there will be a label for the menu the third thing we will also have the root great and now how do we represent the data here the menu items so we're going to create a signal here let's say we have menu item let's create a signal it's going to give you an auto import here and the signal type will be menu item and array the initial value will be this now i have the data here with me so i'm just going to copy it in so that we can save some time you can add or delete to it whatever you want great so these are our menu items the next thing we need to do is to add the material list that we are going to be using so let's import that here let's import the material list here angular material list and let's import mat list module here also as you know we also need the icon here so let's also include the icon let's do the icon here the mat icon module great this is going to work for now so then below the side nav header we are going to add a mat nav list now this is a list which has link tags within it representing items of the list which is exactly what we want so let's create a link tag here and we're going to give it a mat list item directive now this is going to style it as a mat list item and i'm going to iterate over using the ng4 loop now it says that your ng4 is missing a value so we need to do let item of menu items and remember for signals we need to use it in this way to get the value of the signal great so now within this a we are going to add first of all the icon that we need now this icon is going to be item dot icon and then we are going to add a span and this will have your label great and let's see how this looks okay not really that nice now to correct the layout the angular material uh, navigation list or in fact the mat list actually provides you quite helpful directives which you can use to add the styling to your specific components so for the material icon within a list we can actually use a directive called mat list item icon let's see how this looks and you can see it styles it accordingly then for the span which is actually the title of the menu or the title of the list we can use mat list item title let's see how this looks and you can see it looks pretty nice as it is great so we have our sidebar navigation completed in the expanded state now in the next video i'm going to add the collapse state to this sidebar so be sure to subscribe to the channel so that you can get notified of future videos thanks for watching